Hello friends, uh, welcome back. So today our discussion is on uh, how to build an application uh, which can uh, track the hand movement. Okay, so yeah, I know like uh, the, it is something a different uh, plan which we already uh, you know started uh, two weeks back about Ababan Cloud and today I'm supposed to uh, build a Fury application uh, which can consume the CDS which we built together. I know, but suddenly uh, there is some change in plan because I was uh, doing certain POC on uh, uh, on this kind of hand tracking capabilities, and I thought like this uh, tutorial it will be very uh, kind of a good technology fun, and thought to share with all of you. Okay, so uh, yeah, if you just uh, check uh, the uh, Google with uh, handtrack.js, you'll get to this GitHub link. Okay, that's been built by Victor. Uh, this genius actually created uh, a library using a TensorFlow uh, and CNN. Okay, with this neural network and uh, this uh, TensorFlow, uh, uh, it basically a trained model. Uh, you see, like it's an ego hands data set. Uh, it's a trained using these uh, concepts, and uh, it says like the trained model is converted to the TensorFlow's format. Okay. And we will be using this uh, uh, kind of a library in our application to make this hand tracking uh, capabilities uh, kind of a very easily able to achieve it. Okay, so that is the overall uh, you know purpose of this tutorial, like how to uh, use this uh, kind of a thing and how easily you can build it out. Okay, so that 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 the plan. Okay, so certain things you'll uh, you'll be noticing once you get into this page. So it says like you have two uh, different ways you can actually plug in this library to your uh, to your application. Uh, one of the option is like you can use a script tag. So with this CDN link and the minified version of this hand track, you know, library, you can just plug into your application. This is a pretty simple way. Okay, so in case you want to have an offline mode. You can install the entire, uh, you know, hand track JS library using this npm command. So what will happen? It will create a node modules to your application, and you have to just, you know, uh, put the proper uh, folder path so that uh, it 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 refers the same uh, file, uh, right? So minified version of, I mean, this this uh, link uh, hand track means JS. It has to refer to the same folder path. Then it becomes an offline. And without internet access, also you can uh, pretty well can use this application, but it will take some time to download the, the entire library. Okay, and just to call out. Okay, so once you just add this script tag to your application, what next you have to do? You have to uh, automatically will see this hand track, this particular uh, reference, uh, you know, will be enabled for your application, and you have to load uh, a model. So what this model is. Uh, this model is basically certain parameters, okay? And this model parameters uh, will be using to create the model object. So the hand track load this function, uh, we have to pass the model parameters. It's basically let's say max uh, number boxes, right? So this 20 means it's 20 uh, maximum hands it can it can you know track, right? Or maybe image selector uh, scale factor, sorry, 0 0.7. So if you reduce down the scale factor, your, you know, it will gain uh, the speed. It means the tracking uh, capabilities will be much more enhanced, but it will compromise some other, uh, you know, factors. Okay, so that means like this model parameter is quite crucial and important. We we have to pass it on to this load function to have a model object. And once we return this model object, right, we can start using this detect function. At this detect, we can pass either a, an image or maybe a video, a stream, and with a promise uh, then function, uh, this will return a predictions. And these predictions will have a structure of like this format, like B box class and score. So we'll be using the first one, which is a B box, because it contains your x, uh, y coordinates along with width and height, uh, you know, uh, dimensions kind of. Okay, we'll be using this particular thing. Okay. So let's uh, then start and see like how uh, we can uh, build this easily. I hope you will enjoy this uh, uh, presentation. So let's see. Uh, okay, so first uh, let's create one uh, application. Uh, let's open terminal. Okay, and uh, let's say 
okay so let's go to javascript folder ah. okay then create a folder let's say my hand track app right so my hand track app okay so that is the thing we are creating so let's go into this uh, okay and then open this in our VS code cool it opened right fantastic so let's close it I don't need this one okay so to start with uh, we will basically create three things as normal web developments we do we have we need some app.js we need uh, something called index.html and we need something uh, called style.css right so these are the three uh, uh, basic uh, you know file structure that we need for creating a web application so we'll be basically doing a web application here okay so i'll create an index.html first so let's uh, do something i have just already built out to make this uh, things little easier but i'll explain what uh, it contains and what it does because i don't want to type in front of you okay okay so what, I, what my plan is, you see, uh, I have basically added this URL. I told, right, some CDS, the CDN, sorry, the CDN uh, and Handtrack Minified JS library I have to link. And I have added uh, this app.js over here in the index so that, and you have to remember, like, uh, you should keep this source uh, for the CDN prior to your app up you know sorry application.js linkage otherwise it will not work because the moment app.js uh, gets loaded gets you know initiated this hand track dot load will be triggered means uh, this particular function right so hand track dot load what did you see okay yeah hand track dot load it will be immediately triggered right so that's the reason you have to have this you know uh, source linkage prior to your app.js okay so that is the first thing second what i have planned is i have created uh, a few divs so in the first div i just added two buttons uh, just to control the video and uh, also update the status because the moment it's loading uh, it will be delayed it will take certain times uh, to get it loaded and eventually then it will be uh, ready for usage so just to uh, up, you know keep updating like what the current status I this uh, you know one battle toggle button is just to control the video on and off kind of a things and update note will just uh, you know tell you about the status of the model being loaded or not okay fine after this I have added two elements one is a video and another is the canvas okay so video as you can uh, pretty well can uh, think through it will be used for uh, rendering the uh, you know video streaming and canvas I'll be using just for uh, demonstrating the tracking of the hand okay so that is the uh, things I'll be using I'm adding pretty much simple you know ABC kind of an uh, uh, you know uh, letters or something so that it uh, knows like I, I, I mean whenever the my hands will reach uh, this letter A then immediately I am planning to make a color change or maybe the size of the font size needs to be increased just to uh, tell uh, to the uh, to you like the moment uh, my hands get tracked right it's been uh, it's been used uh, for some other activities right? that is the overall purpose right so the moment my hand gets tracked I would like to use that uh, you know action to perform something else right so that that's the plan so my action would be like I'll make a change of the color of the letter let's say for a simpl simplicity uh, things a reason I have just taken this as an example so that pretty much very simple and straightforward than index.html where I'm just attaching my CSS over here right I think all good next uh, of course we have to uh, put a little CSS uh, let's see put little CSS over here uh, so uh, let's go to CSS
Okay, I'm just copying CSS thing over here, putting it here back. Okay. So this CSS uh, just to control, you know, uh, make certain beautification on the uh, different uh, things like. Okay. So let's see uh, with this CSS and all. I just need my app.js now. Okay. So let's go to repository, go to app.js, copying it, and let's put it over here. Okay. Okay. So now I'll just explain uh, this app.js from this from the beginning. What I'm doing is first I'm taking the video canvas and context as the you know element a reference. Very simple. And canvas I'm just taking it a two-dimensional, right? Kind of an X and uh, Y kind of uh, things. Okay, so then uh, pretty simple like the toggle button and update note I'm just taking because we have to control it, right? The video uh, switch and video on, uh, switch on, switch off kind of things should be done by the toggle button. And update note as I explained, like it will be used for, to you know uh, describe the current model loading status or video status, etc. That purpose I'll be using this one. Okay. Then already we discussed about the model parameters, which I've just taken a reference from my this Git link. Okay, uh, two variables. One is for is video, uh, and another is the model. Uh, so by default, to in start initially, I'm just setting the video is false. Of course, it should be false because my video is not on or active. And model uh, means the model object, which I'll be getting after the loading is successful. I'm just initially I'm setting it to null. So that once it gets loaded, I'll have some value. Okay, fine. Then this toggle button, I'm just attaching a function called toggle video, right? So because I would like to switch on and switch of the video, and I'm just telling like if my video is not on, not active at this moment, so let's just update like starting video kind of a comment, and then run start video function. So start video means it will basically initiate the video. Okay. So, start video. Before you go to start video, right? Uh, as as you should be knowing, that this is an important thing. The first thing will be hand track dot load. Okay. So because hand track dot load, I have to pass the model parameters. Model parameters means, as I told, this is the things I have to pass. Okay. To this object, you have to pass uh, to this function, and it will return this L model, which is the model object, right? I'm just Taking this model object, I'm telling like, hey, this model is now loaded. Once the load is successful, right? And my toggle button disabled becomes false. So that means uh, my I can start uh, using my toggle button now to you know trigger my video, something like this. Okay. Uh, maybe one thing we can do. The moment we are getting a toggle button, uh, maybe we can just put toggle button dot disabled. To true. So initially, let it set to true so that you cannot. I mean, I should not be able to click on this button unless the model gets loaded successfully. Because once the model gets loaded, I'm setting it disabled as false. Means I'm now uh, able to click on this button uh, to uh, start my video. Okay. So as I told, starting video means the start video function will be called and here is our function, right? So hand track is again, I told like it will be available and it will have a default method called start video. So where we'll pass this video streaming and when the video is started, it will return a status. Like the status will tell like whether this video started or not. So if this is true, means video started, then I'm just updating this text so that I get to know uh, it started. And of course, my uh, flag or kind of a is video, this particular Boolean flag, I'm setting it to true. Means yes, it is now active. So once it is active, now it should be able to uh, detect my hand movement, right? So I'm just writing a dedicated function called run detection. Okay, so this particular function, I'm writing it over here and I'm using now model. So because model is now available to me, and because it's already um, you know uh, returned from the load function which i just explained so now we'll be using a default method called detect and i'll pass this video stream to it right 
and it will then return a predictions as i told this predictions will contain a b box and other you know which basically coordinates x y coordinates and dimensions i mean the length of the box which is have been uh, tracked through so that predictions it will return and once i get the prediction right immediately i'm just uh, rendering this prediction to my canvas beside because i'm just planning to have uh, two things one is a uh, one box will show my video and the side box will show the canvas right so the one the video rendering started it will basically uh, render the same uh, thing as kind of a replica to the canvas uh, which is beside to the video control okay or rather rather to say video element okay so now here the simple tricks is like uh, dynamically i'm attaching just kind of a css uh, to the letters which we built right abc simple so the moment my hand reaches uh, that particular location uh, right i'm just setting up the uh, b box zero is zero is basically your uh, see or the good point is like prediction zero so zero means is uh, the first hand something like that so zero one two three more number of hands comes means that particular predictions zero one two three will be uh, de you know dedicated for each tracking of hand okay and for that particular hand been tracked b box will tell the location of the or the position where the hand is currently so zero is basically my x coordinates so i'm just picking only the x coordinate means if i go to browser quickly i am basically taking x means this value there it is okay x means this value b box x that zero means basically i am taking only the x value okay and i'm just telling if it is less than 80 uh, then you just make the a letter is big letter so if i just go to my style css i'm telling like big letter is means the font size will increase to 10 and it color will become red okay very simple and little bit other css i've just added to make it you know uh, proper and prominent and by default this alphabet's position is absolute because it's sh it should be on top of the canvas okay so that's uh that's the reason i put this as an absolute okay so i think all we said this is what basically we need right so let's test this application i think i have explained everything i am not missing it out okay one thing is uh here uh, this is quite important right so if the first thing is the run detection is being called right so run detection is called the video started it run detection means it will basically render to the beside canvas and it will detect my hand but this process has to be kind of a, you know uh, uh, kind of a, uh, a recurrence kind of it should start right so uh, means it, it should keep running keep you know tracking my hands movement right so uh, that's the reason this request animation frame uh, is a function which will you know set the uh, fps around you know five or something so that with this request animation frame i can you know keep this tracking uh, quite easy okay it will be keep looking into this tracking uh, or rendering to the thing and it will keep looking it's kind of a set interval you could have used right but i'm just using request animation frame so that uh, you know it can keep uh, tracking the hands uh, movement and it will you know uh, you know show like where the hands uh, location or position is at present so this is of course quite important and this will only trigger if this i is video flag is on i think all set all pieces and code been explained so let's now go to index.html i basically have one live server installed if you don't have it you can just get it from here okay you have to just put live server this uh, live server right so i have already uh, you know it's a quite huge down, download it's been done so i have just installed it right so so that easily i can test this index.html in a live server so if i just execute okay it is saying the loading model so model is not yet loaded and this abc as i told it's a you know kind of a lemon green color it's showing so my intention is the moment I would you know move my hands, you see that it's asking for the uh, camera to start things. Okay, so now model is loaded. So now that means my uh, toggle button, toggle video should be capable to doing things. Let's let's click on this, right? So it's now starting video. Awesome. So I have two uh, things. So this one is basically a webcam 
uh, of my laptop right and this is the original uh, video uh, stream and i'm just rendering it to the beside canvas so this is my canvas over here okay and here this is the uh, my secondary camera or secondary webcam which is actually doing uh, my overlaying on the on the video recording okay so pretty simple thing so let's hope it should work so if i just start it somewhere you see the hands get tracked okay So means like if I put it over here, maybe the light thing is not proper. Just keep it here. Yeah. So it's below C. I have to just keep left. So the B is now enabled. okay yeah it's a position and things little important and if I just take it left then the A is become red so you see like with this hand uh, it's it's enable it's able to track and it initiates some other actions which I'm interested to right so this movement it basically so what happens this coordinator right coordinates uh, of uh, the screen basically starts from here as zero right but here uh, in particular thing uh, uh, the coordinates of the you know the, the 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 hands the more close to this left side the the you know x value will be increased will be and the more it is right side the x value will be decreased okay so that's why you have to just uh, right put little of maths and to just to calibrate like what exactly the position and accordingly you have to make your decision okay with the logic okay uh, this is working maybe not super fine maybe some light or something can be a problem so let's Okay, it's able to track, but hey, so yeah, so it is just yeah, little bit of things it's able to do. Yes, now it's below that location which says my B is I'm highlighting as red so let's take left little yeah now A becomes red okay so it this needs little bit tuning and it also uh, depends on how the browser speed and everything so maybe for a better experience you can download it uh, locally and you can execute in rather than from the CDN. I mean CDN is also super fast uh, That's a cache thing for the cloud. So Yeah, so it depends. I mean, it's a lot of lights and all kind of things uh, gives that flavor perfection But yeah, it pretty it works pretty well, right? So and it doesn't need a lot of coding and things to you know get it done Okay, so that's all uh, for today I think uh, you uh, you have enjoyed it and if you like it please share this video with your friends and as promised maybe in our next uh, tutorial will be definitely come back with uh, Avapan cloud okay. bye goodbye